The Cambrian era was a part of the Paleozoic era, and it had the most rapid evolution to be ever recorded. The Cambrian explosion produced an incredible diversity of life, including many of today's most important animal species. The evolved species during this era included chordates. This was especially important because vertebrates fall in this category. It's unclear what triggered this biological bonanza. It's possible that atmospheric oxygen levels were sufficient to support the growth of more sophisticated bodily structures and methods of life. Thanks to emissions from photosynthesizing algae and cyanobacteria, the environment grew more friendly as a result of the rising sea levels and the warming of the climate, which flooded low-lying landmasses, creating shallow, marine habitats ideal for the creation of new life forms. The Cambrian era was a period of immense evolutionary innovation, with many major families of species forming in a 40 million year period. Trace fossils in Cambrian rocks also reveal increased diversity, indicating that Cambrian creatures were evolving new ecological niches and techniques, such as active hunting, digging deeper into the sediment, and creating intricate branching tunnels. Finally, throughout the Cambrian era, mineralized algae of various sorts, such as dacyclad green algae and coralline red algae, appeared and diversified. The three main faunal biogeographical areas The landscape of the Cambrian planet was vastly different from that of today. During much of the Cambrian period, fossils in continental shelf deposits suggest the presence of at least three main faunal provinces, or biogeographical areas. 1. Laurentia Laurentia was surrounded by the most distinct faunal province, it was most likely placed above the Paleo-Equator during the Cambrian period, according to paleomagnetic data. Another Cambrian faunal province encircled Baltica, a small continent located in the middle to high southern latitudes. Baltica's Cambrian shelf deposits are formed mostly of sandstone and shale and are quite thin, rarely topping 250 meters 820 feet in thickness. Carbonate deposits appear to be modest and thin, perhaps as a result of cool water conditions. Gondwana, the biggest Cambrian faunal province, spanned the globe from low northern latitudes to high southern latitudes. Gondwana's fossil and rock accumulation reveal significant changes in response to its vast size, diverse temperatures and ecosystems. 2. Tectonic Movements Gondwanan regions were impacted by tectonic activity, notably in what are now Australia, Argentina, and Antarctica. Rock was folded, faulted, crumpled, and formed into vast mountain ranges as a result of the continental collisions and plate movement that occurred during this time. 3. The Climate in Cambrian Era The global climate during the Cambrian period was most likely warmer and more balanced than it is today. At the Cambrian Poles, the lack of either landlocked waters or land may have prevented the formation of polar ice caps. There were no glaciers and weather was mostly throughout the world. The disintegration of the late Proterozoic supercontinent Rodinia resulted in the dispersion of land masses. Most of North America was located in warm and temperate southern tropical latitudes, which encouraged the development of large, shallow water archaeocyathid reefs throughout the early Cambrian. The terrestrial environment was devoid of vegetation and unsuitable for life as we know it because plants had not yet undergone an evolutionary change. The bacteria and algae protists that inhabited the shallow oceans of the Earth had exclusive control over photosynthesis and primary production. In conclusion, the oxygenation of the waters occurred during the Cambrian. Even though there was an abundance of oxygen in the atmosphere by the start of this period, it wasn't until the Cambrian era that there was a significant decline in the number of bacteria that deplete oxygen which allowed for increased oxygen levels in the oceans. The Cambrian explosion may have begun when the dissolved oxygen in the water started to increase. A huge amount of research is yet to be done in this field, maybe in the upcoming years, we will be able to give you a more detailed video about it. Do not forget to like, comment, and share the video. Subscribe to our channel to view more such content.